to the people of St. Martin, to our residents and to our guests. As we say goodbye to 2018, I take this opportunity on behalf of the government of St. Martin to wish you a prosperous new year 2019. 2018 has been a year of immense challenges, but through faith, perseverance, and God's grace, we continue to overcome and are in a better position to build on the many successes we have accomplished over the past few months. On January 15th, I was appointed as Prime Minister of St. Martin, tasked with the job of overseeing the rebuilding process through the execution of the National Recovery and Resilience Plan. The NRRP is the roadmap to building back St. Martin. An excerpt from the document outlining the vision states as follows, and I quote, the overarching goal is to restore, secure, and strengthen the well-being of the people of St. Martin. This requires a resilient community in a healthy living environment, a resilient growing and more diversified economy, and a transparent, effective government with enhanced capacity." End quote. Together with the previous and current Council of Ministers, we managed to push this country forward in the face of criticism, both internally and externally. I want to thank all the ministers who continue to work tirelessly to see this recovery process through a successful end. Your efforts have not gone unnoticed, and I urge you to remain focused on the National Recovery and Resilience Plan and the governing program as the two principal guiding documents on which all plans are to be executed. Now allow me to look back at some of the accomplishments of 2018. In February, the government of St. Martin secured 50 million guilders in liquidity for the daily operations and later an additional 32.6 million guilders was achieved to ensure that the government met its obligations for the year 2018. On April 16th in Washington, D.C., Together with the previous Minister of Finance, Mr. Michael Ferrier, we witnessed the signing of the trust fund agreement between the Netherlands and the World Bank for 470 million euros or 580 million US dollars. With the official signing of the agreement, over 100 million US dollars was set aside in the first tranche for projects such as the St. Martin Emergency Recovery Project, which was approved on July 10th for $55.2 million and has as its objective to contribute to St. Martin's immediate emergency recovery needs. Additionally, the goal is to strengthen institutional capacity to manage resilient recovery and reconstruction by supporting the repair and equipment of shelters, houses, the resilience of the energy and water supply, and the strengthening of the emergency response system. The Emergency Income Support and Training Project was approved on August 2nd for 22.5 million US dollars, with the objective to provide temporary income support, improve the employability of affected beneficiaries in targeted sectors and strengthen the social protection system's capacity for shock response and protection of the poor. The project provides income support to underemployed and unemployed persons who are not currently working in the wake of Hurricane Irma and are faced with declining tourism revenues. Approximately 1,800 people receive skills training in exchange for a stipend over the next 18 months. Just two weeks later, on August 16th, the St. Martin Hospital Resiliency and Preparedness Project was approved for 25 million US dollars, considering that the only existing hospital in the country was unsuitable for a complete redesign over the long term. It was decided that a new St. Martin General Hospital would be built. The construction of a new and larger facility that will be more resilient to climate shocks was approved. 
the project will contribute to a rise in the new hospital's bed capacity from 66 to 110. Improvements in the scope and quality of health services with new operating theaters and a larger areas for ambulatory care. This new hospital will help reduce costly overseas referrals and will strengthen preparedness and delivery of medical services in case of future emergencies and extreme weather events. As of September 1st, 2018, with financing coming from the trust fund, the government of St. Martin joined the Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility, CRIF, purchasing coverage for tropical cyclones, earthquakes, and excess rainfall. This is an important feature considering the urgent need for liquidity by any government following a disaster. At the OCT Resilience Summit during the month of October, I had the privilege as Regional Authorizing Officer to sign the 11th EDF Caribbean Regional Program for projects on resilience, sustainable energy, and biomarine diversity to the tune of 40 million euros, of which 20 million is allocated to resilience. Resilient programs from this fund will help the country to mitigate the immediate financial impacts of disasters. Just recently, the St. Martin Emergency Debris Management Project was signed for 25 million US dollars in funding to suppress the fires on the landfill, salvage the remaining ships in the Simpson Bay Lagoon, and clear the island of any remaining hurricane debris. This project will also provide financing to improve the management of the landfill and decommission the Irma dump site. As we look forward to 2019, I pledge to do everything that I can within my authority to create a better living environment for all persons on St. Martin. We must continue to build on the foundation that was laid in 2018. As we look to the future, we must inspire the youth to prepare themselves to take this country to the next level. Let us establish a new St. Martin dream that sits on the pillars of a smart, and resilient country. As government, we have set out to accomplish a number of priorities, programs, and plans for 2019. One of the first priorities of this government will be to pass budget 2019 as quickly as possible in order to facilitate all the plans that have been envisioned. With an approved budget 2019, government can carry out the key priorities as set out in the governing program, building a sustainable St. Martin. As a community, you will be happy to know that monies has been set aside to establish a disaster fund. A target figure of 1.2 million guilders is currently earmarked for the start of the disaster fund. By setting aside this amount, Government will secure another financial option for recovery following any disaster to handle its obligations without disrupting the regular operations. A key priority as outlined in the governing program is the stimulation of entrepreneurship and job creation. Funds from the trust fund have been allocated for the St. Martin Enterprise Recovery Project. The Enterprise Recovery Project, estimated to be in the area of 35 million US dollars, aims to support eligible, micro, small, and medium enterprises that have been impacted by the hurricanes Irma last year. In accessing financial packages for asset replacement and working capital through local financial institutions. A large percentage of businesses are unable to get financing from local commercial banks as they have collateral requirements they cannot meet. The Enterprise Recovery Project will provide subject to a business plan that is acceptable to a local financial institution, financial packages for micro, small, and medium enterprises in the form of a combination of grants and loans. The total number of assisted enterprises is projected to reach 300 in the first year and close to 600 in the fourth year. 
the Solid Waste Management and Environmental Improvement Project, which is estimated at 35 million US dollars, aims to improve long-term waste management and environmental protection, and will be informed by a forthcoming study on long-term solutions to sustainable solid waste. Its broader objective will be to implement key elements of the government's long-term waste strategy and its roadmap for sustainable waste management. Securing the financing for the reconstruction of the airport terminal building continue to be of utmost importance. The objective of this Council of Ministers, considering all the options, is to ensure that the best financing agreement be selected in the interest of the people of St. Martin for such an important project. We intend to see the finalization of an integrity chamber for St. Martin and to show our maturity as leaders taking our country into a future where everyone prospers. We believe that integrity, and good governance are fundamental for the establishment of a proud and sustainable country. With the goal of modernizing IT, implementing new technology, and strengthening the government apparatus, this Council of Ministers has approved the start of an e-government project that will help to improve the overall experience of accessing government services in general. As it pertains to international and regional and local relations, as Prime Minister, I continue to promote cooperation with key stakeholders. Firstly, with our brothers in the North, we continue to work on areas that are mutually beneficial to both sides, such as disaster management and seeking funds that target cross-border issues. High on the agenda will be the establishment of the United Congress, an initiative of my counterpart, President Daniel Gibbs. Within the Dutch Kingdom, we continue to work with all partners to ensure that we are treated equally and fairly. In early 2019, a meeting is scheduled in Aruba amongst the Dutch Caribbean countries to formalize areas of cooperation and to come with agreements that will benefit all involved. For example, a key area of cooperation is disaster management and establishing the individual roles of each country and what can be expected in a time of crisis. Regionally, the pursuit of associate membership to CARICOM has taken a positive turn and as such, an acceleration of the process is expected. Associate membership to CARICOM opens doors to many regional organizations and the positive services that can offer us here in St. Martin. Internationally, we continue to forge ties with key organizations via interactions with the World Bank and IMF that serve as platforms for possible investments to our island nation. As St. Martin rebuilds, its presence on the world stage continues to grow, and this government is keen to have its citizens benefit from these economic activities. Now I take this time to remind you that St. Martin's recovery is not a sprint, it's a marathon. We must remain committed to the goal and task at hand of returning our country to its position as leader in the Caribbean. As I conclude my address, I wish you a prosperous and happy new year 2019, and may God add his blessings to you and your family.